So if you managed to set up Google, if you managed to set up Bing Webmaster Tools, it's going to be very similar on Google. But the, the, the catch with Google is that we have Google Search Console, which is their name for Bing Webmaster Tools, Google Search Console. And we have another thing called Google Analytics. So before this class, how many of you had heard of Google Analytics? Raise your hand. Almost everyone. So uh, before this class, how many of you had heard of Google Search Console? No one. And before this class, how many of you had heard of Bing Webmaster Tools? No one except the people that already took our class, cheaters. So uh, no one uh, had heard of these other ancillary ones. Google Analytics is the big famous one, so we're going to set that one up right now. If you look in my handout, back on the first part where we've got the um, Google part, there is a link there also that, that takes you over to the documentation, support.google.com webmasters. Well, you can read that on your own, and that's like Bing that you get details. Uh, it talks here also about verifying and claiming it and sitemaps. We, we've looked at that. Then the direct links are right here. Google Search Console and Google Analytics. Well, it's a very similar process under Webmaster. So you can look at that one on your own. It's going to be the same thing about verifying the site and so forth. So you can look at that on your own. I want to show you instead Google Analytics, which that's a little trickier. All of this stuff, again, it's slightly tricky the first time you do it, but then after that it makes more sense. So let's set up Google Analytics here. Click on that link, google.com slash analytics. And this just gives you a big spiel about what this is. OK, great. At the very top right corner, um, we have um, top right sign in uh, analytics. This is what I'm saying about they have this stuff separated in so many different screens and they all have their own purpose but like for the really advanced people it's good but for most of us it's a little overkill so in the top right corner click sign in and then analytics we also have this other new product called analytics 360 suite I don't know what it is I need to educate myself on it they added it like in the last year and I remember when they added it, they had Analytics and Analytics 360 Suite together. And I'm sure that was confusing people. So notice how they moved it all the way to the bottom now. We want the first one, Analytics. This will then ask for a sign-in. Just like we saw the sign-in for the other site, we have here either uh, sign-in with an existing Gmail. We also have more options, which is create an account. So however way you want to do this, either sign up or sign in. And again, you can use an existing personal or business email to sign in. So let me give you a quick moment to sign into that. Once we sign in, I'll show you what it looks like. So take a moment to sign in, and then I'll show you what we what we do with it. Okay, so this is going to be very similar also to, to Bing with a couple variations. I have an account here where I'm setting it up for the first time. You may see a slightly different screen. If it looks very different, let me know. But if you've never set it up, it's going to look something like this. Start analyzing your site's traffic in three steps. One, we sign up. Two, we add the code to your site. And three, it's ready. 
So I'm going to click the sign up here. And get a screen where I'm creating a new account. This is the first thing where I have to write a note here, how this is different from, from Bing. Google Analytics. Has accounts and properties. Account is sort of like the folder where your properties are grouped. A property is a website, or technically, or an app, but we'll just say a website. So thinking about it in this term, an account is a folder. For me, as someone that teaches this and does this for clients, this is very useful. For most of you that only have one website, it's kind of confusing. So I'll show you the example here so it makes sense. I, I log in with my credentials and I create a folder. I create an account for Victor's Bakery. And then I create another one for John's Realty. And I create another one for Janet's law firm. I create a folder. I create an account for each one of those people. Then the properties are Victor's Bakery has website homepage. John's also has a website homepage. And Janet's has one too. But then John's has a YouTube account. And Janet's has a shopping cart. And also a, um, a blog. So I'm going to track data from Janet's homepage, her main website. I'm also going to track data from her separate shopping cart site. And I'm also going to track data from her other separate site, a blog. For John, I'm going to track data for his website and his YouTube. And for Victor's Bakery, only the website. Those are all properties. So a website. a YouTube channel, a blog, a shopping cart, you see the, the confusion with that terminology. So what that screen is asking me there, the very first thing is create an account. So it's not like I'm going to create a new Google account, it's I'm going to um, create a folder for organization. For me, as a webmaster, social media person, that's what I need. For you, it will be very simple with the name of your site and the and your site. Your property, your account, and your property will probably be the same. So to keep it simple, like I'm saying here, account name required. Okay, this is going to be Victor's Bakery. This is going to be the folder where I'm going to track my website. I'll keep it as the name of my website. The property that I'm tracking, I can say home page. And then I add the address to my home page. the property itself can have a separate kind of name. I can call it main, I can call it my site, I could call it Victor's Bakery also. It's, it's kind of confusing for most people that only have one thing to track. This is the home page property of that Victor's Bakery account. That folder will display this one data of this account. And as I showed in the example here, if I create Janet's law firm account, I'm going to submit to it the home page property, a property for their shopping cart, and a property for their blog. I want to track the data in a separate way. I'm saying home page, but it's going to track the data on your whole site. 
It's just that it maybe it makes easier, more sense here about YouTube. YouTube is clearly a different site. YouTube.com slash John's Realty as opposed to John's Realty.com. It is different properties, different websites. If you have to do that, you have to do another one. After you set up this first one, we return to the part to add a new property. And on the same account, I would then add the new property, the new link. Yes. Okay. There's a spot for an industry. So you should select the industry that your site works best with. Food and drink on mine. Time zone. And then this data stuff. It's all optional, but it's recommended, so just leave it as is. You notice I can track up to a hundred different accounts. Most of us will be one. So I will click Get Tracking ID. There's going to be a screen here where you can read these terms of service and then accept. this there's only one way to verify well let me just double check it here they might have changed it this is your tracking ID if you are using a third-party web hosting like WordPress GoDaddy or Wix you will need to follow their instructions to set up Google Analytics okay so that's useful it didn't used to tell you that it just plops you down here and then it's like this is it so, um, setting up Google Analytics, I don't see a button to download my file and upload it. Some of you, I showed you, you need to log into your site and upload a file. There's no file to upload. It's really option two, like option two in Bing. You have to copy this line of code and paste it into your code. So it says here, copy and paste this code as the first item into your head section of every web page you want to track. So this line of code here, as is, I would copy it. I would go back to my website, wherever you saw to set it up, and uh, paste it into your head as the first item. But they're saying paste it in every page. So would you have to go to every page and then not if you're using something like WordPress, because WordPress uses a template system. Okay. So when you went when you go to your header file that we looked at, it uses that automatically on every one of your pages. Okay. That's saying for like old kinds of websites like in Dreamweaver where yeah I would have to edit each page and paste that into it with our modern kinds of sites Wix, WordPress etc you paste it in one place and it uses templates so it puts it everywhere for you so that line you need to copy and paste it into into your site and then after that it'll start to say your status what data it's it's captured that I you with, um, yeah, in your SEO head section, exactly. So everyone that I showed here, you probably just post it, paste it in the exact same place. It should work just fine. Okay, we'll do a little help in just a moment. So this is, uh, this is all that I wanted to show so far for Google Analytics. There's still lots of other screens to look at, but on this day, all I wanted to do was guide us to this point, help people one-on-one -on -one to make sure it's set up, because when we come back next week, I want to see, well, what did we set up? How will it help us for SEO and all of that? And as I said, you want to set these things up in a way so that you can um, get them to, uh, to, to be tracking data as long as possible. Yes. Um, when we were doing the new account when we were on your website, there was also uh, one for mobile app. Yeah. So if your website has a mobile app... Um, well, let's be careful. You, you might be thinking the mobile version, which is different than an app. Rather than just a specific app. 
this, this is for a specific mobile app, right? For an app that you would download from the App Store, yes, right. exactly. So this can track data from your apps from the App Store, too. So we'll end the lecture at this point. We'll do a little one-on-one -on -one lab if, if people need to set this up. And then when we come back next time, we will, uh, we will see what we've set up and uh, learn more about SEO.